Let's do a review on SMCI, Super Super Micro Computers. If you're one of my members of my channel, we'll do a review of it. Now, this isn't a full review looking at the financials. We're not going to get at the balance sheet. That would take about an hour to go through all the financials. This is just a surface look over about 10 minutes. Uh, this is not entertainment now for those who are watching live. This is made during a live video, but it's done uh, for one of our members. All right, so that's what we're looking at right now. So we're going to do a, a bit of a, a review on SMCI, which is Super Microcomputers, and uh, see if it's a good investment. All right, so first of all, let's have a quick look. This is the, this is it now. What is Super Microcomputer? Well, obviously, it sounds pretty obvious, but uh, let's have a closer look and uh, let's see what it is and whether it's worth an investment. Well, Let's uh, go in a little bit here. Super Microcomputer engages in the distribution and manufacture of information technology and solutions and uh, computer products. It uh, produces in it, it products include tw uh, twin solutions, MP servers, GPU, and uh, uh, that's a bit small for me to read there. Coprocessor, micro, um, um, micro cloud, AMD solutions, power supply, super saver, storage, motherboards, chassis, chassis super workstations, accessories, etc 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 okay now then uh the ceo charles liang charles liang it has a four thousand employees it's based in san jose california founded in 1993 its average volume is 3.3 million so not a huge amount of volume uh the volume today is 886 so we're below average at the time of making this video this is a growth stock there's no dividend uh, benefits here this is just a growth stock obviously we'll come on to that in a second uh today it opened at 324 the low today is 322 52 week low 50 dollars so uh, we've seen over the year a substantial growth price earnings ratio 29 uh times sorry 29.91 so very expensive in this sector it's a 17.32 market cap. So it's a large company. Uh, let me just share that with you on the screen. It's just off the screen there. Okay. Now then, let's... Um Let's have a look at how it's performed. The analysts uh, give it a rating of a, a buy of 71%. However, we need to always understand that the ratings uh, can be uh, a little bit out of date. This could have been done some months ago, um, and uh, it's not telling us when this was done. So we've had a lot of growth in the last few months, so this could be out of date. We don't know. Anyway, moving on. What we can see, though, is uh, the company is most certainly profitable, and uh, it's beating its earnings, or at least it was, until Q1 uh, 23. Since then, uh, Q2 has fallen off. Uh, uh, Q, uh, sorry, Q2 of 23 and Q3 of 23, you can see here, um, it's fallen off significantly. Uh, it uh, was expected to be, and it did, but in Q3 23, uh, it has significantly fallen away. Uh, but Q4 and 23, which is expected on August 8th, uh, expectations have gone up again. So if it does be on that, that would be interesting. But uh, it's, I, I would like to know what caused this. Everything was going swimmingly well. Everything was moving up lovely. And then all of a sudden, everything fell off in Q3 23. Uh, if things fell off in 20, you know, uh, 22, 20, all that area, uh, then fair enough. Or, but, um, because of COVID. But right now, why are we getting, why are we getting it falling off? Because, um, everything else is doing great guns. Why is it, uh, why was it um, um, downgraded and then actually missed? I'd want to look into that. This is not a video about that. We don't have time to go into that much detail, but I want to find out on this date what happened here to drive this price down if I was looking at it. Now, who buys this stock? It's always not, it's always good doing this little bit of information because you can see what sort of, sh what sort of action you're likely to get because these are the people that buy it. NVIDIA, AMD, C3 AI, Broadcom, Taiwan Semiconductor, and on. They're all up at the moment. Everything's green today in this field. So these are the sort of people that buy it. And I like to know that because that gives me some kind of idea of the price action. I like to follow all the earnings. 
get to get to watch them, see what happens on the earnings, start to build up some reputation and some some history on the stock, knowing that, you know, what it does, like we know Tesla pops before an earnings then sells off and so on. Get an idea. So this gives you an indication of the sort of people that buy the stock. And of course, uh, amongst this lot, it's some very volatile stocks that pop up and go down, like we saw AMD uh, and NVIDIA, massive uh, jumps, uh, but equally can go down just as quick. So uh, anyway, that's the sort of field that we're in. Now, how does it compare? This is the part we enjoy doing most. Now, this company was founded uh, in 1993. So we're going to look at it, first of all, over a five-year period. And we can see uh, that uh, this was, this was pr prior, prior ni 1993. This is only shown the last five years. Uh, it was going sideways for the longest time, 13, 20, 17, around this sort of mid sort of 20s range here. And then all of a sudden, we got a huge pop here in April 21st of this year. And we've seen huge rises this year. So I don't like chasing stocks. Uh, unless there's anything significant to why it's gone up like this and will it continue. So anyway, let's compare this to the S&P. Well, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to work out if we put the two side by side. Uh, then, you know, we've had uh, a 64% over five years, whereas with SM, uh, SMCI, we've had 1,286%. Uh, We've seen similar in uh, solar fields. We've seen similar in um, Tesla. So this is kind of what you'd expect in uh, in in emerging markets. You know, where it's AI, whether it's EV based, whether it's solar. We've seen this before. So this isn't uh, this isn't a bad thing. But is it a time to invest? Well, let's have a look at it and see how it's performed against the S and P. And I like to use this as a benchmark. If we'd put $10,000 into the S&P um, here, you can see com compared to um, SMC, uh, SMCI that is, uh, we would have now $44,000 in the S&P. This is over a very short period of time, though, so it's very important to remember that. If you're an investor like me, you're looking at 10, 20 years return. We do want some explosive growth, but we also want to know in 20 years' time we're going to be up. So, we, we you know, this is this is a short period of time. You'd have made uh, a good profit on your $10,000, but look at SMCI, 215000 just short of a quarter of a million dollars from ten grand. Can you believe it? If you'd bought SMCI just back a few years, in fact, in uh, 1994. Doesn't seem that long ago now, does it really? But anyway, that's what you'd have today. Now let's look at the let's look at the chart. Now we can see from the chart, um, the, the super microcomputer is in red. So it, you can see how volatile it is. We've got steady growth throughout the uh, the history of the S&P during this time period. And we had a big drop there of SMCI, then it, can, then it rose again, went past, and then it dropped again. Uh, let's look at 2020. Look at 2020 when we had the COVID dip. This was the COVID dip, all right? We had this. And uh, SMCI, I would say, just looking at that, had probably slightly less of a dip. Not much, but it dipped. So it was subjected. So that tells us that this stock is subjective to extreme macro conditions because not all companies were. Let's be honest. Uh, Peloton. Zoom, other companies, Kavana, not other, co not everyone did bad during COVID. So it's worth noting that, right? But this one certainly, uh, certainly did, similar to the S and P. And then it started to recover, and it pretty much followed the same line as the S and P. But here, something happened. Something happened on June 30 of 22 that started to take SMCI on its own journey. Now, this was around the time we were seeing uh, big explosions with, uh, in fact, I'm trying to think, was that around the time of Tesla? No, I'm not sure. No, Tesla was before then. We've been declining for the last year. So let's, uh, let's disregard that comment. Um, I was thinking of something else then. But we have seen, we have seen it uh, rise. So is it, is, it time for, is it time to buy in? Now, I, 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 super, we, we are looking at quantum computers. 
we are looking at uh, EVs which need these faster computers and these far, faster processors. And the chip industry, without a doubt, is something to be uh, invested in. For me, however, I'm not really in other than the S&P, which I hold, Amazon, which I hold, Google until a couple of days ago. I took a 50% profit and Microsoft. Not really in it much more than that because it's very difficult to pick the winner. If I was buying this right now, what I would be doing is I would like to look at an ETF. There are plenty with ARC, plenty with ARC that look at innovation, uh, and there's a whole chip sector. I would perhaps prefer to buy the an ETF because if you buy this one, it's had a massive rally. It could easily go down very, very quickly. What if it got acquired by another business? Well, that could, that could be good or bad. So it's not a buy for me. I don't want to be buying a, a stock that's had a massive rally like this um, when other companies do a similar thing. Uh, I've, would, would, of course, from this point, would like to look at the financials. Does it hold debt? What's its financials looking like? This is not that video. We're not going into that depth. This is just a 10-minute uh, review of it. So for me, until I've looked at the financials of it, I don't know. Um, I would prefer perhaps to buy an ETF, which uh, would be in in the, the chip sector rather than buying this one. But no doubt about it, with AI exploding, with um, EVs exploding, we do need more chips. We do need more computers. This is a sector you want to be in. I am in it enough with Amazon. Remember, Amazon acquire companies like this. They've got they've got um, IonQ. They could buy this company. I don't know. Just saying, for example. Um, so. I can be involved in chips and I can be involved in um, AI and all that through a more diverse stock like Amazon, which has its fingers in other pies as well, rather than all in on one particular stock. So F. Caban, thank you very much for bringing this to our attention. I hope that review was somewhat useful to you. And uh, there we go. If you... Um, become a member of our channel and you'd like me to look at a stock for you. Uh, you can, uh, I, it's a service I provide for my members. Uh, this is just a basic uh, review of, of the principle of owning this particular stock. Um, become a member and I'll do one for you. And uh, click above my head to see more information or relevant videos like this and links to my social media. And I will reply to all of your comments if you leave me a comment. If you look over here and down here, there'll be more videos. I think that will be useful for you in this sector. As always, until next time, take care of your money, your crypto, yourselves. Most importantly, take care of each other.